Um, the reading comes in the Bible on page 1034, verse 27 to 36. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone strikes you on the cheek, then turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even the sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lead to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them, without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's meet God. I just want to pray for Vicky. Uh, Lord, we just lift mm. Vicky to you. And we thank you for the preparation that she has done. We ask you to be with her as she speaks to us. Father God, would you open our ears for us to hear what she has to say to us this morning. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. Amen. Thank you. So for those that don't know me, my name's Vicky. Um, um, yes, my name's Vicky. I was a member of the church for about 13 years, um, and I still class this church as my home. Um, I love it. I am so in you with it with you guys in this vacancy, so thank you so much for um, inviting me back, um, and I'm definitely praying for you guys in this time. So firstly, I just want you to turn to the person next to you and ask them, how's their week been? Highs and lows of their week? Just for a couple of minutes. Uh, how highs and lows of the last week? Okay, guys, draw those to a close. I'm sure you had more highs than lows in the last week. So this passage falls into Christ's famous sermons in which he instructs his disciples on how to live as his followers. And this sermon in Luke 6, along with the sermons in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, are these instruction manuals for Christ's followers. And if you desire to follow Christ, these chapters will tell you how. And they contain truths, they contain uh, Christ's practices and how we practice and how we can be lived by. And as followers of Christ, we should live by this all. And as we work through this sermon, we find that it turns our world completely upside down. Uh, Christ gives us some commandments and principles which are really hard to carry out constantly. And this is one of them that we'll be talking about today. It's to love your enemy. But Jesus was a loving guy, right? Come on, guys. Come on. Talk back to me. Jesus was a loving guy, right? Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. And we see this in the book of Luke and so many of his amazing healings and teachings and the parables and then paying that ultimate price of dying the cross Uh, so we can live a a life of freedom. So I just want to read that first line again. And I'm sorry, I'm reading through the ESV, which is a little bit different to NIV, but um, yeah. So it says, but I say to you, you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. I'm sure many of us have read this numerous times, and I've read it many times over the last couple of years. And I have thought, wow. That's really hard to do. Do good to those who hate you. Ooh, like, oh, struggle. And it is definitely a hard one to live out. It's a hard one when people have done really bad and hard things to us. They've hurt us and, um, you know, live asking, Jesus asking us to live that out, to love our enemies is, it is tough to do. But who are our enemies? Personally, I don't really like to use the word enemy. Uh, I find it just a bit too harsh. But if you find that's okay, then you go with that. But let's say people that you don't see eye to eye with. Um, 
I'm on this page, yeah. Uh, don't see eye to eye with. I'm sure we've all come across people that we don't see eye to eye with. It's people, even our family members or other Christians who seem to just dislike us and people who are out to cause us harm. It's those people that Jesus is fo focusing about in Luke 6, 27 to 38. And maybe someone, in your, someone has come into your mind right now that you don't see eye to eye with, that you have a little clash with. And i really like you just to keep them in your mind during this sermon. So when Jesus speaks about those who hear in verse 27, he isn't talking about those who can actually physically hear. He's talking about those people who are open-minded to understand the message that he is giving his people and who are wanting to follow his way. So that's us, right? That's us. Luke carries on to say in 28 to 31, um, Bless those who cursed you. Pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic. Give to everyone who begs from you. And for one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. As you wish that others would do to you, do to them. So we hear at the end here that Luke writes that Jesus is saying to them, do as you wish to do back to you. So it's that whole thing of treat others how you wish to be treated. You want to be treated, sorry, let me calm down a bit. You want to be treated with respect, with love. So he is saying here, do this to these people. He carries on and he says, if you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get the same amount back. You can see here that there is no benefit without doing this. But Jesus says, but, and I love when he uses that word, but, and it's such an important word here, love your enemies, love those people who you have identified earlier, do good things, lend, accept absolutely nothing back, because in, the reward is going to be in heaven, and that reward in heaven is going to be great. So can we all sit here today and say that we always do things uh, for nothing in return? Some of us may, but some of us, and I've definitely been guilty of this, that we look for something in return. Well, I've done this for you, so you should do this for me. So how can we do this? How can we apply this to our lives today? So I'm going to go through three practical ways that you can love your enemy. Number one, do good. Luke 6, 27, the practical way, the first practical way to develop love and show love to our enemies is do good to them. Christ says at the end of Luke, do good to those who hate you. So when you find something good to, for them, do it. Not to shame them, but because you're trying to find in your, love, in your hearts to love them for Jesus' sake. Number two, Bless, Luke 6, 28. It says in Romans 12, 14, it says, Bless those who hurt you. Bless them and do not call down and curse on them. Instead of gossiping about them, choose to speak blessing and life over them. Speak God's goodness over them. The way that Jesus and Christ speaks good over us, speak good over them. And again, find in our own hearts to love them. And then thirdly, pray. In Luke 6, 28, lastly, pray for them. Ask God for their salvation. Pray to God for a changed heart for your heart and for their heart. Ask God to let his will be done in you and in them. Pray for them. Actively start to ask God to help them. Ask God to heal their hurts in their lives. Um, you know, we don't know what hurts they've had in, in, in their lives, which has motivated their actions towards us. Ask God to bless them and show mercy to them. And do all this in order to find in our hearts to love them. And if you do good when you find opportunities, bless when you think of them, and pray and intercede before God, 
you'll find that God will begin to put love in your hearts towards your enemies. Actual love, sometimes loving emotions too. So God massively challenged me in this area a few months back. And um, I remember, um, just, just think about that person and, in your life. And um, I, I met somebody uh, about two years ago, and, and we butted heads. We did not see eye to eye with each other, and um, it, was, it wasn't great. And um, I would say to my friends, um, look, me and her, just, we just don't get on. Like, we just do not see eye to eye with each other. She annoys me, I annoy her, like, it's done, da da da. And um, people would say, but you're not meant to get on with everyone, Vicky, come on, let's be honest, like, I love everybody, I'm a loving over people, um, I know I do that through my work, I'm at Youthscape and I was at Azalea, so I, I'm an absolute lover, and I, and I was like, but yeah, but uh, it's really hard, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, just my friends would say to me, um, you don't have to love her. You don't have to get on with her. And, but, you know, love her even though she doesn't love you. And I really prayed about this relationship. I was like, this is causing friction within um, my group. This is causing friction in a wider time. Like, I asked God how to best deal with it. So I was slowly led uh, to do things that showed her that I, I did love her. So I would compliment on her skills that she has and that she does really well at, and I'd ask her how she was, and actually ask how she was, and, and want to know how she was, and if it was hard, um, you know, I'd say, so, well, I'll pray for you, like, this week. Now, it was really hard, because I wasn't getting much response back at all. Um, I would say to her, how, she, how are you? And she'd go, yeah, I'm, I'm good, thanks, and not return back, going, and how are you? Like, normal, <laughs> not normal people, but like how a normal response would be, would be, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Oh, how are you? Oh, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right, too. But I wasn't just getting any response back. But I remembered those words in Luke, do good to those who hate you. Now, this person didn't hate me at all. Like, there was no hate or malice involved in this situation at all. But then a few weeks back, and I'm thinking like three weeks back, um, I approached her and I said, hey... Um, I know me and you don't get on, uh, we don't see eye to eye with each other, but I'd really like to be your friend. I'd really like to get to know you as a person, and I'd like to just hang out with you. Now, this is the first time, probably, I've ever had this type of conversation with anybody, because I'd just worry that they would just completely reject me back. But in me, I was like, well, God's asked us and called us to love our enemy, so I'm going to love her. And um, yeah, so I've had this conversation at this deep level with her, and she met me at my vulnerability, and I met her at her vulnerability, and um, she shared with where she was at in life. She went really deep, really quickly, and I, I grew this massive love for her of, wow, you've had a battle going on, and... I was really, really selfish, and I was like, well, she's like this, and but actually there was something going on in her background. And now she messaged me and says to me, hey, Vicky, I'm praying for your new project that you're doing at Youthscape, and hey, Vicky, I'm just, just checking how you are, and, and, and stuff like that. And that is crazy. Like five weeks ago, that was never happening, and, and here we are today saying, hi, Vicky, how are you, type of thing. Through all this, I was not expecting anything out of it. I was just doing what God had called me to do. But I would do what Jesus has taught us, to love our enemies. And in that time, God softened my heart and her heart too. We must live the life here and now for the kingdom to come. Because what we do now does affect eternity later. Our motivation is to please our Father who is in heaven. Whatever happens within our relationships here and now, it happens. And I do realize that it's really hard to love our enemies. I realize it's difficult to love those who have tried to defeat you, those who have said not nice things about you. It is painful, and it does go deep. And I'm really aware of this, but God has called us to do this. If we try and follow those three steps, God will make breakthrough happen. So, something practical for you guys to do. 
Those who have a smartphone, I'd love you to put a reminder in for every day at a time it's convenient for you of that person that you are battling heads with. And those who don't have a smartphone, a reminder, put it in your diary, some way that you can remind yourself to do it. And I'd really love you to encourage to pray for that person on a daily basis. If that is, you know, I really pray over that discussion that we had and it didn't seem to work out that way or that person that was really hurtful for me years ago, I'd really encourage you to do this because you will see breakthrough. I didn't think anything was going to happen out of this relationship at all, but you will see a mighty breakthrough if we pray. And we all know prayer works, right? So why do we not do it more? (laughs) I always think that to myself. I think why don't I just pray more? Like, come on, like, I know it works. Um, But I, yeah, please, I really encourage you in this next week to just to start daily praying for that person that uh, is your enemy. Yeah, amen.